I have water throughout the day and then when I actually get really 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 hungry like I feel like I'm gonna break up with my 17 boyfriend flee the country fire all my editors then I decide it's finally time to eat oh dear I see why this got deleted hey everyone I'm Abby Sharp welcome to Abby's Kitchen Today's video is sponsored by Built Bar and we'll be reviewing the very controversial, highly requested and now deleted Blair Walnuts video, how to lose weight fast 20 pounds in three months, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. But first, let me tell you about my sponsor Built Bar. So let's have a survey. Do you like protein that tastes like chalk? Um, no. Because I definitely do not. And that, my friends, is why I love Built Bars. Because they actually taste like chocolate, because they're made with actual chocolate, but bonus, there's a lot of protein in them, which we love. So, today's flavor, I just bust it into a new box, like, mm, I'm feeling myself. What do I feel like? That's the question. Mint, fruity, chocolatey. <gasps> Guys, it's Friday today when I'm filming this. It's Friday then, it's Saturday, Sunday, what? It's Friday then! And so I'm feeling the cookies and cream. This is my favorite. I may have chocolate on my face, but I don't care. Mm. So this bad boy, 17 grams of protein. <gasps> it's so good, like chopped up on yogurt, or sometimes what I do is I melt it in the microwave for 10 seconds and then I put whipped cream on it. My mouth is still watering. Oh, so good. And I actually usually have one before bed, but if I were to do this as like a post-workout snack in the morning, I would throw in some fruit or oats as well. So if you want to try these out yourself, check out the link in my description and use my promo code ABBYSHARP15 for 15% off of your order. Okay, I cannot forget here, huge trigger warning that you can read in my description or right here. This is actually a pretty triggering video. Um, she mentions hard numbers, shows body pictures, and also some of her tips can be easily interpreted as disordered eating. So please, 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 Skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey. And if you are new here, please ring this bell, ring this bell, ring this bell, and subscribe so that you never miss out on an episode. Okay, so I actually reviewed Blair Walnut's diet about a year ago, and if you remember, I was actually quite supportive of her intuitive non-diet approach to food. She seemed to be all about enjoying the food that she really loved and eating what felt good to her body. And outside of her satirical comments about like being a skinny legend, there really wasn't a lot of weight, diet, or wellness talk. But it seems a lot has changed since then. Now, if you're a regular here, you know that I don't make judgments or share opinions on people's body, face, or really anything else aesthetic. Um, I believe in body autonomy and doing whatever feels best for your body, whether that's intentional weight loss, plastic surgery, photoshopping images, etc. Though there is a caveat to this, which I'm going to be discussing in this video in just a moment. But what I do take issue with is the spreading of really triggering misinformation and disordered advice. So a lot of you, like a lot, a lot, a lot of you sent me this Blair Walnuts video on her tips on how she lost 20 pounds in three months, insisting that it was triggering as fuck. I figured I better get to it stat. And because I had a feeling when I watched it that it was so bad that it was gonna get taken down, I screen recorded it ahead of time. So. In the past, when an influencer has taken down a video, I've tried not to comment on it, thinking, you know, they probably feel remorseful and they realize they've done something wrong, um, so maybe they've had a change of heart themselves in their position. But in this case, that video racked up so many views and so many of your views 
I know this because I got so many requests from you about this video telling me that it like completely shook you. I thought, my God, like the damage is done. This information has been out there. People have absorbed it. People have listened to it. People are ruminating on it. I need to take it down and help you make sense of this all. So we're going there. But I first want to answer the age old question, is 20 pounds in three months even safe? So that amounts to approximately 1.7 pounds a week, which is within the one to two pound loss per week that most experts recommend. Though I will say that this is a quite significant loss for a straight size woman like Blair. So I would be curious how much of that weight is fat loss versus water and metabolic muscle. And I also would be concerned about weight regain. So research suggests that losing weight too quickly is associated with metabolic declines, nutrition deficiencies, muscle loss, dehydration, and mental health disturbances. So it's really important to find a way of eating that you feel that you can sustain for life. How did you lose so much weight so fast? So basically I went from 147 pounds to 130 pounds in a couple months and I'll show you all my secrets and how I'm able to keep it off without really trying or putting in any effort because I'm a low, low effort, effort kind of gal down. lately. <laughs> Okay, no exercise, no dieting, no thinking about it, no effort. Girl, you are killing it with the clickbait. I am like dying to know the secret here because it sounds a little too good to be true. The most important thing that I think that I do is intermittent fast. Sometimes on accident, it helps me save my calories for like later in the day, right? So I typically don't eat breakfast, I just have coffee. If I do eat breakfast, it's around 12, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so yes, this is textbook intermittent fasting. But as I discussed in my intermittent fasting video right here, it's often counterproductive to use this method to kind of save your calories for later on in the day. Not only is this a setup for a binge, which explains why it's not uncommon for people to not lose weight or even to gain weight while intermittent fasting, but we also know that there's evidence that there are metabolic and blood sugar regulation benefits to consuming the bulk of your calories in the earlier part of the day rather than later on. In other words, if you really wanna optimize your fasting window, eat all of your meals earlier on in the day. But I also know that there's a lot of social and psychological reasons why that isn't so easy for most people to have like a 4 p.m. dinner, which is why all of these are moot points because I don't recommend intermittent fasting at all for most folks. Shocker. I know. I try to just have espresso or a double espresso or a triple espresso in the morning, hot with nothing else. I have water throughout the day. And then when I actually get really, really, really hungry, like I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna break, break up, up with, with my 17, 17 boyfriends, boyfriends, flee the country, fire, fire all my editors, editors. Then I decide it's finally time to eat. Anything I feel like, but usually it's fruit or eggs. Um, Or I just start with like lunch. Okay, I'm not sure if my bar for low effort is significantly lower than Blair's, but what about getting so hungry that you're considering fleeing the country and leaving your 17 boyfriends says low effort to you? I mean, I know she's joking, but it seems so emotionally and physically exhausting to take that roller coaster every day just to eat some eggs and fruit. Like, gosh, talk about not worth that drama at least give the girl some pancakes or like a pan of cinnamon buns. Am I right? Perhaps you're right. So I don't actually count my calories, but I do hack my calories. Try not to eat highly caloric food. I really watch it with chips and guac, right? Other things I watch it with is like peanut butter, ice cream, everything that's really high calories, I kind of like avoid. I mean, if weight loss is the goal, then yes, calories do absolutely matter. And being mindful of your portion sizes for those high calorie, lower nutrient items like chips, candy, ice cream, etc., is probably a smart plan. But some of the foods on her no-no list are really nutrient dense foods that while higher in calories are also highly satiating because they're loaded with hunger crushing compounds. 
So guac, for example, is rich in healthy fats and fiber. And peanut butter has fiber, protein, and healthy fats. So while we may want to be more mindful of portion sizes of these nutrient-dense foods while trying to lose weight, I don't think we want people to think that they need to cut them out completely. When I eat at a restaurant, I try to either go for salad with no cheese, very little dressing, raw foods, a salmon poke bowl with no rice. I try to go for fish and vegetables or meat and vegetables. Restaurants, unfortunately, put a lot of oil and butter in our food. So sometimes when I'm ordering eggs and the restaurant is a little sus to me, I get hard boiled eggs because I can't add oil to those. Oh wow. I see why so many of you tagged me here. So. Yes, oils are calorically dense. So again, we want to be mindful of oil portions. And I know that's obviously more challenging when you're eating out. But Blair, I have to just say that this is very much sounding like advice that you would find on a pro and a Reddit site. Like this is exactly what I would have done when I was really struggling with my eating disorder because it was the only way I could control or know how many calories I was eating. So like, Ordering hard boiled eggs, not because you liked hard boiled eggs, but because you know that the restaurant can't sneak in any unknown calories, kinda a big red flag to me. So Blair might not be counting her calories, but instead she's fearfully choosing foods that are as low in calories as possible without any regard for balance or actual nutrition. I'm not sure that's a better or healthier or even easier way to go. Actually, I know it's not. I'm really trying to watch my calories and I'm eating out all day. I'll get hard boiled eggs for breakfast with avocado and tomato on the side and fruits, like some kind of raw fish tuna tartare with just greens. And then for dinner, I'll do like a soup and a salad. Like I try to keep things very light. <sighs> okay, so breakfast. I mean, it's a bit boring, but at least we have some balance with the protein in the eggs. We've got healthy fats and fiber in the avocado and some more fiber and carbs in the fruit. But considering she's likely breaking a super long fast with that, I worry that that's just not enough. Now lunch, we've got maybe some protein and also maybe a bit of healthy fats in the fish, but we definitely need some carb action to round that out. Like poke bowls without any rice have around 200 calories. Like that's just not a meal. And then to follow that up with just some low calorie soup and some more vegetables in the salad with no protein and probably also not a lot of fat. Again, that's a few hundred calories tops. And when I do the math, that's no more than likely like a thousand calories a day compared to my notes on her previous What In A Day review where she was eating around 2000 calories. And I know that this is just her recounting her meals, so it's a very rough estimate here, but that's potentially a 1,000 calorie deficit. Like, what the f I do like French fries though. I'll have like French fries and mayonnaise and that'll be like my meal. Okay, I love French fries and I think that you can absolutely still lose weight while enjoying French fries in your week. But like, in addition to an actual meal, not as a meal. Like some french fries on their own are not a meal and forcing yourself to stay hungry just to accommodate eating some french fries is not low effort to me. It's potentially dangerous and disorderly behavior. And honestly, ask anyone who's had an actual eating disorder, it takes an enormous amount of effort to keep that up. And I'm not saying that Blair has an eating disorder at all. I'm saying that this advice in the wrong hands is very dangerous. When I'm out and I order a side of mac and cheese and I share with my friends, that's another tip I have for you guys. Share, share with your friends. friends. Let them eat most of the food. <laughs> so I think it's always great advice to share food with friends, but ordering a small side of mac and cheese for the table and having your friends consume most of it so that you can create the facade of participating in the social foodie fun without eating more than a few dozen calories is problematic as <laughs> Warm liquids keep your stomach full. I love hot tea, hot anything tea, just hot water with lemon, just hot water by itself. Soups like bone broth. If there is a vegetable soup on the menu, get it. If there is some kind of like brothy soup, get it. Okay, so it's a classic diet tip to start your meal with a broth-based soup or to drink a ton of water before a meal because it will temporarily stretch your stomach trigger your vagus nerve to cue satiety in your brain. 
But when little to no energy is actually provided in this transaction, this message here is very short lived and you're back to being really hangry again soon after. So please, Blair and everybody else who's watching, the only way to effectively hack your hunger is to eat calories, like to eat food or to drink calories, whatever. But this is your body begging for energy. So please girl, just, just listen to it and respond. Help me, help me. A cup of hot water and then eat lunch. Sometimes I have the tendency to overeat friends and I'm talking and just stuffing my face. So if I drink a little bit of hot water before, I will eat the portions I'm supposed to be eating. So who said that these are the portions you're supposed to be eating? Because I would guess that if you're stuffing your face, it's not because you're just excited to be with your friends. It's likely because your body is starving and deprived and you need that food. Guys, please stop trying to trick yourself with all these stupid hacks. Your body is gonna hack that hack. I don't count my calories. I eat between 1,500 and 2,000 calories a day probably. I mean, here's hoping, but I would say that that's not what it sounds like based on all these hacks. The reason why I edit my body, especially on thumbnails and things like that is because even if I have a good message in the video, if nobody clicks on it and nobody hears my good message, what's the point of my good message, right? Okay, gotta be succinct here. First of all, I think that heavy photo editing on social media can in some ways be ageist, fat phobic, and can contribute to young viewers' insecurities in the pursuit of aesthetic perfection. But I don't think it's fair to suggest that these things causally lead to eating disorders or body dysmorphia. I believe that their use is more of a symptom of a societal problem, not the source of the problem itself. So as Blair points out herself, it's something that she feels that she kind of has to do because everybody else does it. Unfortunate, yes, but also I would say a fair point. And while some countries have actually banned photo editing like this, I do worry that that may be oversimplifying the problem. What I think is a more realistic ask is that the same way that we as content creators have to disclose our sponsorships, I think we need mandatory disclosure of heavy photo editing when claims about our body are being made. So I don't think that everyone needs to shout out to the world that they've had plastic surgery. Like I just think our body is no one else's business and we're really all entitled to do whatever we want to it and to keep it to ourselves if we want. But when an influencer is claiming that some manual effort on their part, AKA diet or exercise alone has resulted in the after photo that they're sharing, I think it's deceptive not to call out when surgery or heavy photo editing has played a role. So I guess if anything, I give the girl props for being transparent about what she does. And I guess I wish that other influencers, <coughs> Kardashians, would ultimately do the same. Now, my second point is that it's always been my position as a content creator that we sometimes need to use clickbait to get the right people to hear our message, which is also what Blair is saying here. But in this case, I just need to say that, honey, this is not a good message to spread. Like labeling her body on the left as fat in juxtaposition of her skinny body on the right in the thumbnail is insensitive and triggering for a lot of folks. So I think that in this case, the combination of Blair's edited thumbnail, the title, and the content itself is toxic as f and doesn't serve anyone well. Sorry, not sorry. I don't go to the gym, but I do walk a lot. I will not have a day where I just sit in the room without walking, I absolutely refuse. You know what else counts as walking though? Dancing. Okay, so first of all, what I like, I like that Blair is recommending a joyful activity like dancing or even walking if that is more enjoyable and sustainable than going to the gym. But I don't love that she's so hell bent and hardcore on never ever having a day where she doesn't walk. Like, what if she's sick? What if she's injured? What if it's a holiday or it's a really busy travel day and there are other self care or family or work priorities that need attention? Having a healthy relationship with exercise means exercising flexibility and body kindness and trusting that our body isn't going to go to shit 
just because we missed one day of activity. Don't focus on food. I feel that it makes me very food conscious and restrictive and it's really unhealthy for my own brain. I become really obsessed with food to the point where after I finish eating, I'll think about my next meal. I'd rather drink hot water, skip breakfast because I'm not hungry, chicken breast with broccoli and rice. I have to measure it and then in the morning, the next morning, I can have an omelet. You know what I'm saying? Like I cannot do that. So as I discussed in my video on calorie counting and that ballerina right here, yeah, I also don't think it's psychologically always healthy for most people to obsessively count calories. Some people can do it and then they just see it like as data, which is great. But for a lot of us, that's a monsoon mental load to try to carry. But her alternative is arguably much, much worse. Because while you might not have to do any complex math equations or log like every bite that you take into your app, you instead have to constantly find hacks to keep yourself in a grossly undernourished state. And the result is that you likely end up with a severe caloric and nutrient deficit, which puts you at risk of nutrient deficiencies, hormonal imbalances, metabolic disturbances, and weight rebound. So this approach may be easier for Blair, but I think it's very, very dangerous universal advice. I used to do that and I feel like I just gained more weight because I would have five days of perfect 1300 calorie eating and I would have four days of being out on the weekend, enjoying my life. That's the balance that really will screw you over. Yes, there's definitely a risk of this kind of restrict binge cycle with any restrictive dieting. And this is why I don't like cheat days because in addition to the psychological toll that it takes, it's very easy to undo a weekly caloric deficit with a massive blowout meal or two. But that risk is really no different with Blair's approach. In fact, her protocol seems so physically restrictive that I can't imagine that most people could eat that way for very long without triggering a binge. If you're craving something, go eat it. Don't replace it with anything else. If you want McDonald's, go through the McDonald's drive-thru. Order whatever you want. Try to eat half. Think that you're sharing your meal with your kid and this is the only food you can buy. Satisfy your craving. I'm sorry. She's telling people to imagine themselves in a food insecure scenario where they cannot afford to provide their body and their child's body with enough fuel as a low effort hack to cut calories. But at least you get to satisfy your craving, so it's easy? If I'm craving pizza, I'll order pizza. I'll eat two slices of my favorite, most favorite caloric pizza ever, and I'll put the rest in the fridge and eat it tomorrow for lunch. Then you can eat your favorite meal more times than just one time of binging and loving it and feeling sick after and regretting it. Okay, so I do like this tip in some ways, mainly because I'm all about allowing yourself your favorite foods to take the novelty away so that you're less likely to binge and make yourself feel sick as Blair says. But the key here is to still eat enough. So I know for me, two pieces of thin crust pizza, not enough for dinner. Nope, I'ma be hungry and I'll be balls deep in the family sized chip bag soon after. But if I paired that with maybe a big salad loaded up with satiating add-ins like some avocado and nuts and chickpeas and dressing, I will be much more emotionally satisfied and physically satiated. So yes to having your favorite foods in moderation every day, but also you still gotta eat enough. Another tip I have is to not snack. When there is no food in the house, I don't eat. I can eat a thousand or two thousand calories in snacks just while I'm editing the phone and they don't satisfy me. Snacks do nothing for me. Okay, so first of all, if the only reason you are not eating is because you do not have access to food, but when you do have access to said food, you eat a lot, that's a pretty good sign that your body needs more food. It needs those calories. You're hungry. You are deprived. So this is a really shit hack. And two, if snack foods are not satisfying to you, hunger crushing combo them. So popcorn, for example, is high in fiber. So you could try pairing it with some nuts or seeds for more balanced satiating snack. Also, 
we really need to shift our perspective on what constitutes a snack. You looking like a snack. <laughs> I, I guess, I guess I feel cute today. A snack is really just a smaller meal served between two larger meals. There's nothing stopping us from having meal-like food, like a sandwich at snack time, if that's what's going to physically or psychologically satisfy you better. There are a couple supplements I take. There are some like water diuretic pills. Another thing I have to recommend to you guys is make sure you're pooping every day and to make sure you're eating enough fiber to force yourself to go to the bathroom. Fruits and vegetables and hot water will make you go to the bathroom every day. And chia seeds. So I'm trying to keep this video succinct. So very simply put, diuretics and fiber do not speed up your metabolism. If you're peeing and pooping more than normal, you are losing water and wastewater, not fat, and you're not magically burning more calories at rest, which is what speeding your metabolism up would entail. Now, diuretic use can also be very dangerous, so I do not recommend doing this without doctor supervision. Everything comes down to poo. As for fiber, it's important to note that too much fiber can actually back you up. So it's a very delicate balance of getting enough and getting the right types of fiber without getting too much. So if you're trying to up your fiber intake to help with regularity, make sure that you're going gradually. And of course, make sure that you're drinking a lot of water and moving your body to help prevent constipation. Well, I think that's all that I can say about this. I feel disappointed, but also quite empathetic towards Blair and the, the fact that she's headed down this road. I mean, she seemed to have such a beautifully balanced approach to food. So I guess my take home message for all of you watching is please do not follow suit. I mean, the physical and psychological risks of a diet regimen like this far outweigh any potential benefit that I could see. I mean, the fact that Blair took this video down tells me that maybe she acknowledges that something here is not right. And please folks, please be kind in the comments. You know I feel very strongly that as content creators, we hold a lot of responsibilities for our words and our actions, but I also want to acknowledge that, you know, it's not easy living so publicly and going about your food journey in such an open and transparent way. And on that note, that is all for today's What In A Day review. Thank you again to Built Bar for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on who you'd like to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.